Are you struggling to learn JavaScript in 2025? You're not alone, buddy. With endless advice, tutorials, videos, articles, it's easy to feel lost. But in this video, I'm gonna give you a clear roadmap to learn JavaScript, master it, and actually get hired with JavaScript. So first of all, let me sell you on why JavaScript is the best language that you can learn in 2025. And again, I might be wrong, but in my opinion, JavaScript is the best because you have the most amount of possible options to monetize your skills later down the line. You can get a job, you can freelance, you can build websites or you can build applications for others. You can build applications for yourself, okay? So you can create your own SaaS, sell it and make billions and billions of dollars. A lot of people hate on JavaScript because it's so flexible and quirky but that is the advantage of JavaScript. So do not hate it, learn how to use it and learn how to monetize it properly. So first, let me tell you on why you should learn JavaScript instead of being a vibe coder. A vibe coder is a new term invented maybe in the last month or so. Someone who has no technical experience is building an application uh, using AI and usually that person is extremely cocky. You can build applications to a maybe decent level to use for you know a person or two like the scope of that application cannot be that big. But once you start building something that can have some potential, you'll start to realize that if you do not know how to code and if you have gaps in your technical knowledge, you will not get that far. So essentially what you are doing right now is you are training yourself to being able to take advantage of these AI tools that are out there that will get better and better with time. So in my opinion, if you learn how to program by yourself, you'll have a strong foundation, which is going to help you later down the line. I know a lot of people are super lazy and they want everything done quickly. You know, they don't wanna put the time in and they wanna get rich quick with AI and whatnot. And it's not gonna work like that, okay? Maybe there was like a short time frame, maybe of like one or two months where you could make a lot of money just by being a vibe coder, but that ship has sailed. Now, I've been teaching people since 2019, so I have almost six years of experience in May this year, and I've been helping dozens and dozens of people learn to code to get jobs, okay? So I know a thing or two about how to teach JavaScript, and I wanna give you my best tips, and this would be the tips that I would give to my pay students. In fact, I'm gonna link in the comments my beginner JavaScript course that you can take for free, and then you can see that I'm actually giving this exact principles and concepts to my paying customers. The first piece of advice that everyone will give you is to not focus on the syntax, but to focus on thinking like a programmer. And this is like the best advice that a programmer could give to another programmer that already knows how to code in another language. But this is the worst advice that I can give to you as a noob, because you as a noob, you will not be able to use your energy to think to solve problems creatively because you will be always insecure about the fact that you don't know how to actually write the syntax of the code that you wanna then write to solve a specific problem, if that makes sense. In the beginning, when you start out, pretty much 90% of your time should be spent manually writing code, writing variables, writing functions, writing for loops, if statements, etc., etc., whatever concept you might be learning, and trying to understand and memorize how to write the syntax of the code that you wanna get out there, okay? And this type of advice, it's completely against what everyone else is recommending to you, but this will actually work wonders for you. So how do you do that? Well, whenever you go through your course on Udemy, on Codecademy, on Free Codecamp, whatever platform you're using, Screenba, it doesn't even matter. Whenever your instructor is gonna tell you, hey, this is how we write a variable, or this is how we write a function, or this is how we make an API call, or whatever that concept might be, write it down a hundred times, a billion times, until it's stuck in your head and you know how to do it with your eyes closed. There are so many tools out there that will do the work for you, like, you know, chat GPT, cursor, etc., etc. you will forget how to write code. Right now, companies are doubling down on figuring out to stop people from cheating in interviews. I have seen firsthand dozens of times, I don't wanna say millions of times because I haven't worked with millions of people, but beginner developers that want to get jobs, that they say they are ready to get jobs, but they don't know how to write a for loop or a function, or they don't know how to make an API call. I feel embarrassed for them but they don't understand that these things are super important to know the syntax of the stuff that you wanna write, okay? If you want to learn JavaScript properly, once you learn the syntax, it's very important to start building applications. The problem that I had, and probably you have as well the same problem, is that you don't understand what 
application is suited for your level because when you search up on YouTube, uh, JavaScript applications for beginners, you'll always see something that is pretty interesting, but very far out from the level that you are at right now. So all these applications that these guys are showing you are very outside of your comfort zone, okay? So then we need to define what an application is. So then you can create micro steps in between these applications so you can start building from day one. If I would start today and the first lesson is about a variable. The instructor tells me, hey, this is how you write a variable. You start with a keyword const and then you give it a name and then you have the equal sign and then you put a value inside there and uh, that value is gonna be like a string or whatever. The first application that you can write is creating 50 variables and then each variable describes something from your room. Like for example, const phone equals iPhone, const peel equals fish oil, right? So that is an application. It might not be the most impressive application. It might be a useless application. But the point that I'm trying to make is that you can actually start making a connection from the real world to the computer world. And then later you'll learn probably about methods and then you'll figure out how you can use a prompt to get some text from the user and then uppercase that text, etc., etc. You start to incorporate methods and different data sources that you are learning from different parts of your course. And the idea is to start creating some sort of Frankenstein of an application that doesn't have a purpose or the purpose that it has is not to solve a real world problem, but the purpose is just for you to practice different things and just being chaotic with it. Because later down the line, once you understand how these concepts fit in together, then you can start creating something that is actually useful, like a to-do app. Even though a to-do app is not mind-blowing or whatever, it has an actual use case, and it's gonna teach you a lot of the concepts that you need to use on a day-to-day -day basis in the real world. You'll learn about array methods, string methods, etc., etc. I wanna give you a couple of uh, pointers when it comes to concepts that you really need to master. You need to understand how to manipulate data. So we have two types of data. We have primitives and non-primitives. So we have uh, strings, numbers, booleans, null, null, undefined. Those are the primitives. And then we have the non-primitives. So we have arrays, objects, and then we have symbol, but I've never used symbol. Uh, so I'm just gonna focus on arrays and objects. In my opinion, you should be extremely familiar with all the array methods that are out there. In fact, again, if you click on that first link in the description or the second link in the description, you'll have access to my course. And then in there I have uh, some resources when it comes to knowing which array methods are the most important based on their usage in their in their day-to-day -day life as a programmer. And we have an exercise, I think I've made it a while ago, I'm gonna link it here. There is an exercise called replicate the array methods. And if you do this exercise, later when you feel comfortable in your JavaScript, you'll start to understand how these tools work behind the scenes, you know, because we are taking for granted a lot of the tools that are given to us. And if we do not understand how they work behind the scenes, we'll think that they are magic. If you really want to have a deep understanding of how JavaScript works and how programming works, you should start having this discipline to go and research how certain libraries are made behind the scenes, okay? Because that's gonna give you that extra perspective and that's gonna help you set yourself apart from the other developers who have no clue what they're doing. You should also look into DOM manipulation, uh, especially as a JavaScript developer, you should know what event bubbling is, you should know what event delegation is, you should have a very clear idea of how these things work. And then you should also understand how loops work. Now, how do you stay consistent as you're learning JavaScript? Because if you come from the HTML and CSS world, starting JavaScript is gonna feel like hitting a wall at 100 miles an hour. You need to understand that everything that you've done in your life so far, it's gonna be extremely different than learning a programming language because learning a programming language is like learning how to think in a different way, learning how to think in a logical way. Try to not get frustrated. The easiest way to learn something is if you like it. But even if you like something, like for example, I like uh, calisthenics. I started doing calisthenics recently. I'm working out on the rings and I like them, okay? But they are extremely frustrating because I do not have the strength to like stay straight because my muscles are not developed enough, right? but I wanna incorporate rings slowly in my routine 
because I don't want to fall out of love with rings because I try to push myself too hard. Because if you start hating something, then no matter how motivated you are on a logical level, you will not be able to dedicate the time to learn that thing. Push yourself, but do not push yourself to the point where you hate your life. Also, understand that from time to time, as you are learning this language and as you are in your journey to, to either becoming a full stack developer or becoming an entrepreneur and selling your own SaaS, understand that you will be burning out. And when that happens, do not quit and go back to flipping burgers. Uh, just take a two day break, a three day break, seven day break, reset completely because it's normal to feel like this. Uh, you have a full time job, you have a life, you have to, I don't know, take care of your kids, go out with your friends from time to time. Uh, I used to be of the mentality of David Goggins, like it's either all in or nothing. It's not like that. Life is very long and you have to figure out how you can combine everything, you know, to get where you want to get to. Obviously, you have to remove certain things. You cannot go out every week. You go out once a month, you know, but try to maintain a positive uh, balance in your life so you don't kill yourself doing this because then you'll hate it and your body is going to be like, why would I do this thing that wants to kill me? No way. Now, another way to learn this thing very fast is to join a community of developers and a mentorship program that can actually help you achieve your goals way faster. So if you're interested in that, click on the first link in the description and apply for a consultation call to see if you can be part of my mentorship program. Again, we are guaranteeing results. Click on the link and see what's up with that. Now, another skill that I would recommend you to learn is to develop the patience to debug effectively. So debugging is something that you'll do maybe 90% of the time that you'll be spending writing code because creating an application is tweaking a living creature. When you tweak this living creature, you'll realize that things don't work out the way you want them to work out, the way you imagine them to work out, okay? Again, I work with people one-on-one -on -one and I see them debugging. And the biggest mistake that they make usually is that they do not understand what the code does. They are trying to write a function that does some sort of calculation, let's say they are trying to sum up two numbers. I have noticed that people, whenever they see an error or if something doesn't work out, they completely freak out. They are not reading their code properly. So when I was in my first year as a developer, I saw this meme online that said something like, I too write code 20 minutes uh, in a row without checking my code. And I was like, haha, that's so funny. And then I started doing that. So I started writing code without checking it in my console or in my browser, without checking the output. I was just writing code as I was understanding it. And that forced me to really pay attention to every single line of code that I was writing. That made me like become a machine when it comes to reading and understanding code. How you guys can start doing this. But the way I would do it would be like, okay, I have this feature that I wanna work on. Let me work on this for the next minute without saving anything, without checking the console, without checking my browser. Let me see how far I can go building this feature for a minute and then you will check it. This really helped me become really good at debugging, okay? Because debugging really means understanding what your code does. Yeah, you can use then console logs to check your variables, to check the outputs of your functions, etc., etc. But I would say like, if you really wanna get good at debugging, you have to really get good at understanding what your code does in the first place. What should you learn after you master JavaScript or how do you know that you've mastered JavaScript? Well, in my opinion, mastering JavaScript is gonna take you decades. So it's not even about trying to master JavaScript because it's pretty much impossible. It's a lifelong journey. But I think there is a moment where if you can build a couple of applications, so I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. If you can build a Pomodoro application, so you can Google what that is, it's pretty much a timer. Then if you can create a to-do app that has some search functionality and whatnot, and if you can build a calculator application, and if you can replicate those array methods that I mentioned, and you can get them by clicking on the link in the comment section, if you can do that, and if you go on Code Wars, which is a, an algorithm platform, a platform where you can solve algorithms. And if you get yourself to level five, 
I think you are at a decent level in terms of JavaScript to be able to learn the next thing, which is gonna be a library, for example, like React, Vue, Angular, whatever is out there. Just check what's popular in your country and learn that. It's not gonna be a 30 day thing, probably it's gonna take you really two months to do it right if you are focused and if you know what you have to do. But uh, I think it's possible for most of you, especially if you like it and if you're interested in this. And we are getting into 2025 and 2026 where if you understand how to write code, you don't even need to become a programmer. You can do so many other things out that are out there. You just have to have your eyes open and you have to have your skill set. And then if you figure out how you can create opportunities for yourself, you can make a lot of money if you have the skill set, okay? So that's pretty much the video for today. Let me know what you think in the comments. Peace out.